Okay guys, so here's a really unrehearsed and, and kind of semi-unscripted uh, discussion in Mesh Mixer today. Um, so forgive me if I do some stuff here that looks a little strange. Um, I'm not going to really edit this down for uh, polish, uh, so the production value is going to be whatever it is. Uh, but this is a bit like the uh, demonstrations that I do in studio for you. So today we're going to work in Mesh Mixer. and Mesh Mixer is a simple program with not such a simple user interface, we'll see. Um, we're going to do a few things with this program today. We're going to do a little mesh repair. I'll show you how to close a hole. I'll show you how to clean up a mesh. I'll also show you how to reduce the number of polygons so that you can import this into programs that, like Fusion that have uh, a bit of difficulty with large poly count. And I'll also be working with the Boolean functions. These are similar to the combined functions that you'll find in Fusion. So let's get started. I'm just going to kind of work today with some simple things here. Uh, if you want to import an object, you can work here, here, or up here in the uh, up here in the menu. Right now, I'm just going to work with stuff that's on board, uh, sort of pre-formulated meshes that are in Mesh Mixer. And we'll start by importing this uh, this bunny right here. So here's our bunny. And the first thing I'll show you is how to kind of navigate uh, around the space here. You can uh, you can certainly work with the, the view cube and the home button, those sorts of things that you're familiar with from Fusion. Um, if you work with an option and drag, uh, you can kind of do a kind of an orbit here. And one of the things you'll kind of notice as we drag this bunny around is that the bottom of the bunny has an open hole. So one of the things to remember about uh, the kind of work you're doing with 3D printing is it a 3D printer does not like an open mesh. It won't really accept it. So one of the things you might find in a mesh that you've created or imported um, is that you have a mesh, you have uh, some mesh repair that you need to do. So one of the things we'll see here is that we've got to close this hole. We can kind of see the indicator here, this sort of stripiness and this blue line uh, coming around here. Also this red dot uh, that are all indicators that something is amiss. So um, one of the things that we'll do with this guy is we're going to kind of uh, uh, repair him. And it's pretty easy to do. You just have to know where stuff is. So that's what we'll be showing you. Um, I'm going to go uh, down into the analysis here along the menu. Uh, this menu is kind of randomly organized for this set of options. We'll come in here and I'm going to look at the inspector uh, for this mesh. And when I look at the inspector, you can see a couple of things sort of show up here. Uh, these are indicators or icons of things that you can do to kind of repair. Uh, so there's, I'm going to show you two ways to do this. One is just click on these little icons uh, that you see out here that are pointing to the problem, and that'll usually just kind of close up a hole or it will repair a non-manifold mesh, which is a mesh that's kind of crossing over itself. Right. Another option, and we'll just import another bunny here, replace that guy. Another option, another way to do it, is to just use the auto repair. So if we go again to analysis, look for inspector, and click instead here on auto repair, you'll see it'll give you kind of a different result, be a bit of a softer mesh this time. So let's use that one, and just a couple of ways to do that. So next, um, we are going to, what are we gonna do? So we're gonna kind of, uh, Go back to home here, I'll get out of this mode, and we're going to select um, the object. I'll show you how to work with selections. So we're going to select in the menu over here, or the uh, options items over here. And you can see that you can work with a brush or a lasso. I'm frankly, a bit confused by these tools. What I find easiest to do is just to kind of click, hold, drag, or click, not click, hold, and drag, but really just point, 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 point. And as you get close to that first point, you can click again and it'll close it. And that's basically going to select. It's kind of, kind of the easiest way. Whoops. Told you this would happen. Here, let's just try again. There we go. And you can see that that selects the entire mesh. Um, so that's, a, that's the quickest way to do that. It's just to kind of 
uh, click, 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 and then close it up. Um, okay, so that's the selection. And now once you've got it selected, uh, stay in this set of submenus uh, for some options. These dropouts will give you things that you can do. Um, so one of the things that we'll do here is we're going to uh, go down to reduce and edit be aware that edit here is in this submenu. It's not the edit function that's over here in the main menu. So we'll come over here and we're going to go down to reduce. Now our goal here is to take, if you all cursor down over here and you can see the number of triangles here is about 13,000 uh, triangles. So uh, our goal is to probably get this about somewhere about under 5,000 uh, triangles. So we're going to reduce it by about two-thirds well, let's give that a try and see what happens. So I'll just kind of use a percentage here, kind of maybe go down to about 25% and accept that value. And let's see what that does. Well, that really only knocked it down about not 25% not as, as it seems to indicate there, but it sure did knock it down uh, a significant amount. We can keep going uh, with that. Knock it down another 25%, see what happens. Accept that. You can see, well, it's almost 7,500. We'll try another one. You can keep doing this until uh, you kind of see uh, the number that you want. So let me reduce one more time. Accept that. And almost there, one more. Thank you for your patience. And we're down now below uh, 5,000. So uh, once we're done with that, we can kind of clear the selection and we've got our bunny uh, ready to export. We'll go to File and Export here. And we can save it as a, an OBJ file. I, in the interest of time and not jumping out of the screen, I'm not going to do that. Um, what I want to do next, though, is I want to kind of go into uh, the Booleans and kind of work with that. So to work with Booleans, you need more than one independent body. I'm going to go ahead and import just a sphere here. And uh, let's see, we want to pen this. We don't want to get rid of the bunny. So there's that. Now, a couple of things open up here. You just saw the, the sphere kind of open up behind the bunny. But you also see a sphere object sort of locating in an object browser, which popped open when we brought the other piece in. So Mesh Mixer kind of knows there's more than one object here. You can kind of see where this guy is. So I want to kind of move this sphere in a relationship with the bunny that it will make a much more interesting uh, kind of intersection with the object. And really to kind of do that, we need to kind of select the object here. And... Um, when we're working with that, we can kind of do um, select, uh, let's see where it is, um, with the object selected itself, sphere, okay, we go to select, and we're going to kind of cursor around this, click, 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 and close. And you'll notice because only the sphere is selected here, the only the sphere gets selected. So the bunny is not highlighted here. That means only the sphere is getting selected. And at this point, uh, you want to be able to kind of move something. So if we're going to look for, uh, uh, I believe it's deform. Here we go. Uh, so we want to do a, a transform here. And basically what's going to happen when you click this is it's going to open up with uh, kind of a, a little uh, a little widget like you see similar in function to the uh, to the transform tool uh, that exists in fusion so you can kind of drag this up drag this over drag this over so you can see how you can kind of move this around and get this into some interesting relationship with the object so I'm just going to kind of place that sphere sort of intersecting the bunny's face a bit All right okay and once we like that, we can hit accept for the transform. So now we're done. And we can clear the selection. There it is. Okay, so now let's do some Booleans. How do you find the Booleans? Well, it's kind of weird. You just kind of select and shift select both objects in the object browser. Um, once you have that, you can it'll invoke uh, a submenu here and you can work with Booleans. So there's three kinds of Booleans here. You can see me cursoring over. 
Uh, one is a Boolean union, one is a Boolean difference, and one is an intersection. So let's just do all three of these. I'll just kind of do a series of undos uh, to kind of do them. Boolean union is pretty easy. Just click on this and it basically turns this into one solid object. Now you'll see a difference in color here, but you'll notice if I go to select this object, it's really just one object. And if I select it, everything will be selected. It's unlike it was before. Okay, so let's clear that and let's undo. Okay, so the next step, let's select both of these objects and we're going to try an intersection this time. I'm saving difference for a reason. So an intersection is basically uh, those portions of the object which are overlapping. So it's really just the face of the bunny and the sphere face. You can kind of see that in operation. So that's kind of a cool effect. All right, and I'm going to cancel out from that and let's try uh, the uh, Boolean difference. Now, the reason I wanted to save this for last is because I'm going to, I'm going to show you how it's dependent on order. All right, so if I select the bunny first, then shift select the sphere, uh, select Boolean difference, and you can see how that creates a uh, kind of a hole where the sphere was, right? So on the other hand, right, if we select it the other way, select the sphere first, then the bunny, do the difference, you can see now the opposite happens, right? So um, difference is object dependent, right? Object order selection dependent. And that's the, uh, that's the way you kind of work with that. So with all of that done, you can sort of accept this and you've got your object and you can export that. So again, file, export, and you want to go after an OBJ or an STL uh, in this case to make it a print ready file. I'll recommend, um, since we have these simple functions and Booleans um, in MeshMixer, that we keep things simple this semester and maybe just work the Boolean functions that you intend to generate in your object uh, right here in MeshMixer. Um, why go through the trouble of getting into Fusion when this already will do that work for you? Uh, that's it. If you have questions about this or need me to elaborate on this in, uh, in our uh, working session together, uh, please let me know. Drop a line. Uh, I can do more videos if you can stand it. And uh, Chrome R out. Talk to you later. Bye.